I was robbed. You guys want to play? I only charge you a quarter. Nothing like playing the real game. Anyway, we got work to do. Let's get to work. Cue the music. Not that music. All right, we got an eighth generation Civic here. Needs a new starter, so come along. I'll show you how I do it. No diagnosis in this video. Um, the Sometimes the starter's not kicking out and engaging and starting the car. You can just hear it spinning inside its own housing. So the owner wants to change it before it leaves them stranded. Um, now in this model, the starter is way down in there, all the way around behind Robin Hood's barn there, all the way down the bottom. And so it's a pain in the butt to get to. So we're going to have fun with this one. All right, first thing we want to do is disconnect the battery. There's a cable going from here straight down to the battery, and we don't want to short it out. So we need to disconnect the neg negative uh, battery cable. As you can see, I already have it disconnected. It's down there, tucked under, so it won't come back up and contact this. Um, in fact, this is a brand new battery, so I haven't even hooked up the negative cable yet. And I'll leave that little cap on there just for safety as a secondary thing so that cable won't pop back up and touch it. Because we don't want to complete the circuit and inadvertently short something out. And of course, anytime we disconnect the battery on these older Civics and Accords, we got to make sure we have the security code for our radio so we can get that fired back up once we, uh, once we get everything reconnected. All right, as you can see, I'll be working under the vehicle, so I have this car already lifted up. I got the front and the back lifted up. I have the six-ton jacks out here so I can lift it up pretty darn high because I'll be laying down underneath, so I want a little more room to work. Uh, if you want to see how to lift this car up properly and where the lift points and everything are, you can watch, I have a strut video on the front and a shock video on the back on this car and you can see exactly how to do it safely. All right, from the passenger side, if we look right past the brake rotor here, there is our starter right there. You can just see the end of it. If that would focus, that's the end of the starter right there. And if I can get a shot of the back side, there you can see there's one of the bolts right there. So you can see how fun it is to get to. Um, now, I know people have... Uh, pulled the axle out and tried to go in through the side here and I guess you could do that um, you gotta have really long arms you can go in this way um, but we're gonna do it like Honda recommends and we're gonna go from underneath and looking from underneath the car there's another shot of our starter right there in the middle so that's what we're working with it's a tight area in the middle of nowhere and it's hard to get to alright to make a little more room we're gonna have to pop this A pipe off so we're going to have to remove these two bolts right here, this one and this one, and then the three nuts right here, one, two, three. And we're going to have to pop those off. Now, as you can see, I live in the desert. There's no rust. If you live in a crappy, rusty area, um, you'll probably have to heat these up, and you may even have to cut them off with a torch. So it's just that's something to be aware of. If you live somewhere else, you may want to consider uh, popping the axle out and trying to have really long arms. All right, I hosed everything down with some uh, rust penetrant. And this this stuff doesn't do a whole lot, but it'll make it uh, it'll make some pretty cool smoke once we fire this thing back up. All right, these are 14 millimeter nuts. We'll just pop them off with the impact. There's one. There's two. And where's the other one? And there's three. All right, now we'll pop these two off. We need a 12 millimeter for that. I got one here. There's one. And there's the second one. And our pipe is loose and coming right off. And there we go. She's out. So you can see by removing that A pipe, we have a little more room. We can reach up in here. We can get our starter up in here. And now next, Honda recommends that we remove that bracket on the intake right there where my finger is. There's two bolts right there and one bolt down below. We'll just pop that off real quick. I don't know if you can see, but right about over there, there's a hanger. I just popped it off the rubber hanger, this pipe here. And as you can see, I have it tied off right there. And you can see. Now, you can see from our subframe right here, that pipe was right here. Now we have plenty of room to reach in. 
All right, as you can see, I'm just going to reach right in here with my 14 stubby and pop it out just like that. And you can see there she is right there. All right, now we're just going to get those two tens out. And to do that, I'm just going to take a long extension right up here. I'm going to pop them out with my impact. I'm sure I could reach in there with a ratchet if I wanted to, but I got the impact right here. We'll knock them out this way. All right, you can see the setup I have. That's how I'm doing it. Nice long extension. Just pop them both out just like that. And I'll pop the other one out. There's the first one. That's what it looks like. And we'll get the second one. And there, it's all going to come down. So I got to put the camera down so I can grab that. And there, that's what the bracket looks like. There's with the bolt in place. You can see, here they go. I think they're the same length. Oops. Yeah, they're the same length, same bolt. Now I'm going to go set it aside. And you can see I like to keep the bolts inside brackets like this so I can remember where they go. Otherwise you can start getting these bolts mixed up. And as I take stuff off, I like to put it in a line with all the parts. And that way, once I when I'm putting it back together, then I just go back in reverse order. We don't have that many parts on this one, but that's just a habit I got into. Okay, while we're right here, I'll see if I can't just reach in and unclip this. Yeah, there's a little tab on the back side if you push it away from you and just lift up and get it undone. Of course, it's caught in there, but at least it's free now and moving. And then we got another little clip right here. We might leave it. I'll see if I can just reach in there and pop it loose. If not, I'll leave it till we get it out, but it's right there. All right, as you can see, I popped that off its bracket right there. Pretty easy, you just unclips. Same thing with this one, and I pulled it down and around. And then that one little clip in the back, I was able to just pop it off with a screwdriver from underneath. I don't know if you can see it right by the tip of my finger right there. So they're all loose now. So now we can grab the bolts on the starter. All right, now for the bolt on the bottom, we got a couple ways we can go in there. And you can see I'm set up to go straight in with a bunch of extension. And if you look around, you can see right at the end there. So that's where the bolt is on the, right there on the bottom. So we got to break that one free. And then there's one up on the top you can barely see. That one's a bear to get to. All right, we'll see if we can't break it free. These are all half inch right here. And you can see, now that one's loose. And we'll just spin it the rest of the way out. All right, and you can barely see that bolt's loose. We'll get it out. There's the lower bolt. Okay, looking right up underneath, right past the tie rod. See if I can get you a shot. There's the bolt we gotta get right there in the center. Okay, you can barely see the upper bolt on there. You can see I got uh, a 14 millimeter socket on there. And I got a bunch of extensions. It's all half inch, because these things are tight. And so I got it ending right here. And we'll try to put a ratchet on there and see if we can't break it loose. All we got to do is break it free. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, he either came free or we broke something. Well, let's see. Can you see that? Yeah, looks like it's loose. Looks like we didn't break anything today. Well, that's good. And that's what she looks like. All right, our starter should be loose. Yeah, it's out. Now we just gotta maneuver it around everything. And then, oops, and then in my light. Okay, as you can see, I got it pulled back out of the way. It's loose. Now we just gotta get the S-terminal and the starter cable uh, disconnected. Okay, for the S-terminal, I think I need some more gloves. 
it's tight in here. We just press this down and we can pull it off. Now we can get the, let me see here. We gotta get, we gotta get this nut off. If I can spin it around. Well, let me see if I can spin it around and get some more gloves. But we gotta get that nut off. All right, let's see if we can spin this around. And there we go right there. Oh shoot, right there. We gotta get that 12 millimeter nut off. Okay, there's the setup I'm using. I'm just gonna put a 12 millimeter socket on there with my quarter inch ratchet and we'll pop it off. All right, now I'm gonna have to hold the starter while I do that. I can't uh, do that, hold the starter and hold the camera. So we'll be right back and I'll show you. Or I'll just put it on my chest and see if that works. I just got to spin it all the way off. All right, there you can see there's the nut. And where's that ring? There's the ring that connects our starter wire. And then there's the end of the starter right here. Now we can take it out. And you can see there she is. Now we can just easily, hopefully, remove it. And we just fadangle it out. There we go. That's why we took the A-pipe off so we could get this starter out. If you try to go from this way, I'm uh, sorry, from right here, not quite enough room and not enough room from the side without taking the axle out. So that's why we had to take it out. And there she is in all its glory. Um, that's the old starter. That's what it looks like. So this is the piece right here. It's not popping out reliably. So we're just going to replace the starter. Yeah, these can be rebuilt. I don't rebuild them. All right, there's the starter we're going to put in. As you can see, this one's from Honda. We're going with a brand new Honda starter. This one is made by Mitsuba, just like the old one. And of course, it's a good idea. Whoops, this thing would sit still. It's a good idea. Match up your parts. Make sure everything's the same. As you can see, this thing is exactly the same. Um, this is a. This one is not that fun to put in, so that's why we're going with the original um, OEM part. I don't want to. I don't want to have to do this job a second time. And we want to make sure that these brackets are tight, and they are. And if your starter, like if an aftermarket starter, if you get one, sometimes they don't come with these brackets. You might have to pop them, pop them off, and let go of my glove. Pop it off the old one, and then put them on the new one. And as you can see, this one comes ready to go. Um, I did put the nut on there, so that's ready to go. So now we can just set it up in there. All right, we're going to put the starter in, same way we took it out. Now we got to make sure we got it angled the right way. So you can see that's how it goes in the car like that. So we need to fish it up in here like this. And kind of get it into place like that. And then we got to connect our S terminal and our battery terminal again. And there you can see there's a good shot of our empty cavity where the starter goes back in there. All right, if you can see right there, I put the terminal on now I just got to put the nut on the top okay as you can see I got the nut started now I just need to tack it down it's only like 7.7.2 foot pounds so I'll just tack it down it's hard to film and try to connect all this stuff with the camera right in my face so I'll come back as soon as I snug it up all right as you can see I got I got that snug snugged up and I got the rubber put back over the top and I got our S terminal snap back in. Make sure that thing snaps all the way in. Give it a tug. You don't want that thing to come out. All right. Now all we got to do is just take our starter and manage to uh, snake it back in the same way we took it out. It's a really snug fit. I'm going to need both hands and uh, I'll show you as soon as I get it set in place. All right. As you can see, I have it up in place. Now when we snug these bolts up we got to make sure that it goes flush like that we don't want it sticking out a little bit you know like that we shouldn't be able to see any of that polished uh, portion in there that thing you can see it doesn't want to always go in so we got to make sure when we get this thing up in here it, it gets flushed just like that all right now I'm just going to reach in here I'll get this lower bolt into place. If I can get it in there. All right, and then we'll just get it started by hand. We always want to start this stuff by hand. You do not want to cross thread the fasteners in here. 
right, as you can see I got that one started by hand and then we'll push that one as flush as we can and then we're gonna try to have to get the top bolt in it's not gonna be fun all right if you noticed I pulled this wiring harness down out of our way a little bit and then we just gotta sneak this bolt up there They couldn't have put it in any of a worse spot, that's for sure. And now you can see it's in. I don't know, can you see that? You can see the bolt is in. Now I just got to hand tighten it. I need to hold this with my other hand, so I'm going to have to put the camera down. So I'll just pull the starter flush and then tighten this up by hand. All right, hopefully you can see that. I have my uh, socket back on the end of the bolt. I'm just turning it by hand. I don't have a ratchet on there. And we'll just turn this thing in by hand to make sure it goes in. Because we do not, like I said, we don't want to cross thread this. But you can't really get your fingers up there to tighten it. All right, there you, you can see I got the bolt started. And you can't even see uh, can you see that? See where the bolt, the angle that it's supposed to be at, you can't even see it when it's in the proper angle. So if if it's hanging down a little bit, it'll look straight and you'll start cross-threading cross it in. If it, if it goes in one or two turns and it's tight, stop, back it out, straighten it out. I ended up switching over to a 3 8 inch uh, extension with a universal on the end just so I could get some more room. And then I just reached my hand in there and held the actual bolt up in the proper position and then was able to just spin it in with the extension. It's no fun, it's tight, there's no room up in there. Um, that's why I ended up switching to the 3 8 just because there's no room. Alright, so now what I'm going to do, you can see I'm just pushing up with my hand. I'm going to push it up and hold it in place like that and I'm going to tighten that top bolt. I'm going to get it snug and then I'll come back to the bottom bolt. But we want to get that top bolt first. And you can see I'm just ratcheting it in, but I'm going to have to reach up there and, and uh, hold that starter up into place so we're not uh, jamming it in there. All right, so you can see it's the starter is snug up against there. So now we can snug up the bottom bolt. All right, this is the setup I was using just to snug up that top bolt, just my 3 8 inch. I had two really long extensions. And then I'm using a 14 millimeter um, swivel. So this one, the 14 millimeter is part of the swivel. Instead of using a 14 and then a swivel, this shortens it up, makes it a little easier to get those things started. Whoever designed that top bolt, uh, obviously never had to put one in because uh, trying to get to it kind of sucks. Okay, you can see for the bottom bolt, I just put my 3 8 inch extensions with the 14 millimeter socket back in there. And we can tighten it up from here and you can see it's turning by hand so we know we're not cross threading it so now we could just snug it up all right as you can see I put another extension on here just to bring it further out make it easier There, now they're both snug. Now we gotta just do a final tightening. All right, I got the half inch back on that top bolt and we're just gonna verify that it's snug. All right, that's pretty darn good. The three eighths just flex too much. Now we gotta get this to 33 foot pounds. So we'll do our best to see that this is 33. But with so many extensions, this is not an exact science. We just want to get it tight without uh, damaging the fastener. And there you go. We just had to go a little bit more. Now we got to get the bottom bolt. And there's the setup I was just using for the top bolt with the half inch. You can see I have to use a half inch universal and then put the 14 millimeter socket on there. Um, so it takes up a lot of room and there's not much space in there. All right, as you can see, I got the half inch straight in on the bottom bolt. 
we'll torque this one to 33 foot-pounds also. And 33.5, not bad. And you can see the length of extension I had to use to get in there. Pretty darn long. Pays to have a boatload of extension sometimes. And even though uh, extensions can affect your torque, 33 foot-pounds is not that much torque. These uh, half-inch ones are not going to flex that much, so I'm comfortable um, torquing it with the half-inch. As you can see, looking at it, that starter's nice and flush. So I think we're good to go. Now we just got to connect that um, harness to there, that one to there, and then our clip over here on this side. So I'll get those three, and then we'll keep going. And then if you can see right in the middle, I got to reach in there and snap that last clip back in place. There, back into place. All right, now that we got the starter in place, we need to put our bracket for our intake manifold back on. All right, as you can see, I have them started by hand. Now I'll just tack them down. All right. I got all three of those bolts on the bracket tight, so we're good to go there. All right, we'll do one last look, double check our work, make sure we didn't forget anything. We'll grab our light. Now we'll get this A-pipe installed. All right, now we got to get our A-pipe back on, and this gasket is going to get replaced, and so is the other one. And this gasket right here is also going to get replaced. We just got to pop it off. There we go. All right, we got to get this back in place. And there's the gasket I took off, and there's the gasket for there. So we got a new one. We're supposed to replace these gaskets whenever we take them off. So there's the part number for this, for that gasket. These bolts are okay. We can reuse these spring bolts. They're fine. Um, these three nuts right here, they're out of this pack. Whoops, now I'm dropping them back, dropping them all over the place. Get back here. Anyway, these three nuts are going to be replaced with these. And there's the part number for these. And then obviously this gasket's going to be replaced. And there's the part number for the gasket. So all we got to do is set it in place, tack them down. Okay, I cut our wire off to free our pipe. I attached the uh, exhaust hanger back there. We got our brand new gasket in there. And we got our brand new gasket on here. So now we can put the pipe up into place. All right, I just took the pipe, put it up and over the subframe here, and then kind of set it into place. And then I just got, if we can see it, I put one nut. I got one nut started right here. And then you can take this and kind of just place it right over and get it right into place. It'll just kind of pop into place. And then I did the same thing. I got one bolt right here started by hand. Now we can get the rest of them in. All right, there's a final shot. She's all installed and torqued and everything. Sorry, I didn't feel like filming it. Um, if you want to know the torque specs, uh, these are 25 foot-pounds. The front two are 16 foot-pounds. All right, as you can see, I got the battery connected again. And we got the vehicle back down on the ground, and we got the wheels all torqued to 80 foot-pounds. Shall we see if it starts? All right, I'm filthy from laying on the floor, so I'm not going to sit in it. We'll just reach in. Well, there you go. That's how I do the starter on 8th generation Civics. It's been a long day. I'm tired. It's the end of the day. It's really late, actually. And um, I just wanted to get it done. So I know I cut some of those shots towards the end. Um, I cut them off where normally I would film everything. So my apologies, but I was tired, and I was definitely tired of being on my back. So in any event, hey, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.